Right, I hope that we all both endeavour to give satisfaction, Mark. We are looking forward to the performance, are we not, Bertram? Rather. Mm -hmm. It's only good. Absolutely. Oh, the very kind and condescending of you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Rather wonder how you do it. Standing up to perform in front of a million other costermongers with a sprinkling of whelk store owners, related ruffians and minor pugilists. Rather you than me. Uh, yes, um, <coughs> well, uh, why don't you two toddle off to the best and get rehearse? Uh, well, I have a word with Lady Walkinson and have this voice done. Mm -hmm. So to the art, Mr. Big. True, but, uh, well, some of their performances are a little primitive. Uh, Mr. Cholly is not a natural performer. Really? He seemed to me to be a sterling example of the urban proletariat. Is that not how he struck you, Bartram? Of what? <laughs> the urban proletariat. <coughs> that, absolutely. <laughs> sterling example of the urban thingy. Wouldn't you say, Jeeves? Uh, yes, indeed, sir. The, the thing is, Lady Orkestam, that so few of my parishioners are comfortable performing in public. In fact, I have only two, Mr. Cholly and Miss Dolly. Just two? You have just been introduced to the entire <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> we, we desperately need more performers, uh, people who will sing, with preference, and with a little, um, how can I put it, class. <laughs> Hey, you seem already to have martial support from the ranks of the aristocracy. Ah, oh, Miss Cora Bellinger, yes. Always a wonderful support. Oh, Miss Bellinger, splendid young woman. You should get to know her, Bertie. Mm -hmm. She's just the sort of girl you ought to think about marrying. <laughs> She's a sensible, high-minded woman. Ah, well, uh... I don't suppose she'd consider me, then, what? <laughs> Probably not. You are, after all, entirely worthless. Exactly. I mean, no, uh, dash it. A fine girl like that throwing herself away. The point is <laughs> that Miss Bellinger is all we have. You'll think the poster promises more acts from society. But alas, there is only Miss Bellinger. Disgraceful. Does nobody understand their duty to the lower orders? Well, you see, Lady Lord, I try to treat all my parishioners as though they were equals, but when so few will come from society to entertain them... Disgraceful. Something must be done. Bartram? <laughs> oh, absolutely. A shocking state of affairs. I should be rectified at, at once, if not sooner. Bartram, <laughs> you will sing at this evening's performance. What? Oh, I say, <laughs> would you? That would be terrific. I'm so glad you approve of the suggestion. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Under no circs. I won't do it. You can forget the whole thing. It is your civic duty to say, Bertie. Furthermore, it will favourably impress Miss Bellinger. I won't do it. You most certainly will. <laughs> I will not. I think we may regard that as settled. This is it. I won't do it. <laughs> I will not sing, Jeeves. I, I am immovable on this matter. I am as constant as the thing. The thing that is as constant as the... Uh, Thing. What do you think is that, Jeeves? Constant as the northern star, sir, of whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. Shakespeare, sir. Just so, Jeeves. Uh, did uh, Shakespeare ever meet me? Uh, uh, I <laughs> consider it improbable, sir. Well, then, he's a remarkably perceptive chap. He's got me to a T. I will not sing, Jeeves. Uh, no, sir. Uh, that is all there is to be said in the matter. Nothing will move me. Exactly so, sir. Rather than sing, Jeeves, I will even incur the displeasure of my Aunt Agatha. Lady Warbleson will certainly be displeased, sir. I remain unmoved. How displeased do you think she'll be? Extremely <laughs> displeased, sir. Nonetheless, one has one's principles. Dash it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gee, what on earth am I going to sing? <laughs> I would advocate Sunny Boy, sir. Sonny Boy, Chiefs? Are you mad? Sonny Boy is what I sing in my bath. It is sacred to the worst of missions. It is not a song to be lightly thrown away on stage in the presence of the many-headed. Oh, it has one advantage over every other song ever composed, sir. And what's that? Oh, you know it, sir. Chiefs! Hello, Bertie! That. I fancy it is Mr. Glossop, sir. Tuppy Glossop? The very last person I want to see just now is Tuppy Glossop. Do you know what he did to me at the Drones Club? Uh, you have apprised me of these events, sir. How often? Uh, on five occasions, sir. Not counting the evening on which it occurred, or this morning over breakfast, sir. Well, I'll tell you again. Uh, you may recall, sir, I suggested a short holiday by the seaside. It might help you get over these events. All very well, Jeeves. But then I would miss the annual Drones Club dinner. My chance to get my own back on the Viper. Yeah, I fear, sir, that Mr. Glossop might be on his guard against any such attempt. <laughs> Hound Tuppy. Uh, I think Mr. Glossop approaches now, sir. What on earth are you doing here, young Tuppy? Amazed you have the nerve to show your face in my presence. I am drawn here by love. Love, Bertie. I am in love. What on earth are you on about? Well, I think Mr. Glossop is endeavouring to convey the information he is in love, sir. <laughs> I know that, Jeeves. I'm not a complete idiot. <laughs> no, sir. What I want to know, Tuppy, is one, what on earth are you doing here? And two, what on earth are you doing here when you've behaved so disgracefully? You could have told me you were coming. I jolly well did. You very well didn't. We didn't know Mr. Glossop was coming, did we, Jeeves? Uh, I endeavoured to pass on the contents of a telegram from Mr. Glossop over breakfast, sir. Uh, you were retelling the story of Mr. Glossop's behaviour at the Drones Club, so you may have missed the salient point. You haven't understood me, Jeeves. I said we didn't know Mr. Glossop was coming, did we? Uh, the telegram to which I refer did provide us with precognition of Mr. Glossop's <laughs> attendance at this evening's Farago, sir. <laughs> But we didn't know he was coming, did we? <laughs> what I put in the telegram, you great ass. I said I was coming. You see, Bertie, I am in love. Yes, I think we've grasped that now. Uh, Jeeves, how often has Mr. Glossop been in love, to our knowledge? Seven times, I think so. <laughs> Eight if you include his brief partiality for Miss Roberta Wickham. That must have been very brief. I don't remember that one. Uh, how long did it last? Seven minutes. <laughs> there was no time to apprise Miss Wickham of the situation before his affections were given to Miss Potter Purbright. Are you in love with anyone in particular, or is being in love a general sin? <laughs> this is the real thing, Bertie. I am in love with Miss Cora Bellinger. Cora Bellinger? Good heavens. Do you mean the Cora Bellinger on that post? Isn't she the most divine creature you've ever seen? Looked at in a certain light, I suppose she is. Wonderful voice, dark, flashing eyes, a great soul. I rather feared as much. Uh, Jeeves, I haven't met this Bellinger, have I? Yeah, you may recall, sir, she was one of the uh, guests at Lady Warplesome's house in the countryside a fortnight ago. Uh, I recall you mentioning that you were placed next to her at dinner, sir. <laughs> she sang an operatic aria after dinner. Oh, what heaven! She even looks like an opera singer. I don't know why it is, but women who have anything to do with opera always seem to run to surface inches. Or surface poundage. It's always one or the other. Cora has the most delectable figure. How can you twerp? You are not listening to me. Cora Bellinger sings operatic arias. Oh, yes! You are about to contract to spend your whole life eating out of the same dinner pail as a woman whose tonsils permanently quiver, whose voice cracks open champagne bottles at 20 paces. She sings like an angel, Bertie. There is worse even than that. Listen and shudder. Cora <coughs> Bellinger is a woman who once berated me for taking a second cocktail before dinner. She disapproves of practical jokes. I mean, when she hears about your appalling behaviour at the drones club. Ah, now, um, that's where I need your help. You see, Bertie, 
If my dear sweet Cora has a fault, it is that she is, well, as you say, a little judgmental about practical joking, and, and some hound of hell has told her about that trivial incident at the Drones Club. Trivial? Trivial? Jeeves, did I ever tell you the trick Mr. Glossop played on me at the Drones Club? <laughs> No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. No, no, never mind that now. The thing is, Bertie, she seemed to have found out about it. I, I bet you've pretty nearly forgotten it. I most certainly have not. <laughs> well, you've not forgotten exactly, but, but you know what I mean. No one laughs more heartily at the recollection than you do. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the thing is, Bertie, old fruit, <laughs> she appears to have found out about that that little misunderstanding, and before ordering the trousseau, she wants to be quite sure that it isn't true. So, you see, Bertie, my, my dear old chum, I need you to rally round and to tell her precisely that. Tell her it isn't true. Uh, yes, if you wouldn't mind too much. But it is true. Oh, well, if you're going to be pedantic about it. <laughs> Look, Bertie, she'll be here any minute. Of course she will, you ass. She's due to sing. Look at the poster. <laughs> How for the life of me imagine why she wants to? Oh, her beefy Bingham asked her to sing at his concert and entertain the barrow binders and the knife grinders and other sundry paid up members of the salt of the earth who congregate in this beastly establishment. <laughs> she said yes, so naturally I'd be over. Naturally. I thought my attendants would seem high minded. And you expect me to tell lies for you? Oh, Bertie, Bertie! We were at school together! Hush! No more. This is a matter for Jeeves. Jeeves, what do you suggest? I would strongly recommend that you uh, comply with Mr. Glossop's request, sir. Oh, good old Jeeves! There you are, Bertie. Jeeves has spoken. You, you told me yourself that he practically lives on fish. <laughs> Why, Jeeves? For what reason? Likewise, wherefore? It is distinctly desirable from your point of view, sir, for Miss Bellinger to be romantically attached to Mr. Glossop. If she were not, then Lady Warpleston might wish to arrange for her to dispose of her affections in another direction, sir. <laughs> Good heavens, I've completely forgotten all about that. There is another aspect to this matter, sir. <coughs> You could require a quid pro quo from Mr. Glossop. I could require all the quids in the world, Jeeves, uh, and the quos. I meant, sir, that you could insist on Mr. Glossop performing an equally onerous task for you in return. <coughs> and what might that be? That uh, Mr. Glossop should sing at tonight's entertainment, sir, in your place. <laughs> <laughs> You're a genius. Jeeves, you're an ass! Ah. <laughs> me? Sing in front of a group of East End toughs who would think nothing of pelting me with fruit from their barrows. Eh? Never! In those circumstances, sir, I doubt very much if Mr. Wooster could see his way clear to providing the desired reassurances to the object of your affection, sir. Uh, he means... I know what he means! Dash it, it's blackmail! Now, there is one advantage from your point of view, sir. Well, dash if I can see it! If you were to offer to sing, then Miss Mel Bellinger might be most favourably impressed. She would consider it evidence of a most serious and responsible nature. You're right! She will see that rough, unlettered audience wipe the tears from its belly eyes, and she will say to herself, What ho, that old leg really has soul. <laughs> Jeeves is right, Tuppy. <laughs> Jeeves is always right, and never more so than now. I'll do it. I'll tell Cora immediately. I would counsel against that course of action, sir. Uh, it might be more effective if she were to hear about it later, perhaps from Mr. Bingham. Uh, she would consider it evidence of seriousness and not only responsibility but modesty. Uh, well, couldn't you sort of drop a hint, Jeeves? Uh, Miss Bellinger approaches. <gasps> but soft! What light through yonder window breaks! <laughs> it is the east, and Cora is the sun. Oh, 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 oh I say Cora! Is it Mr. Worcester? Mm-hmm. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no. It was that young hound, Tuppy. You see, uh, Miss Bellinger is ascertaining that you are Mr. Worcester. <laughs> 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 I see. 
Right you are then. Virtual Worcester at your service. Mr. Worcester, I am so glad to have the opportunity of apologising to you on behalf of Mr. Glossop, whom I very much doubt has had the character to apologise for himself. To apologise? To apologise for his appalling behaviour towards you at the Drones Club. Ah, now that's what me and Bertie wanted to talk to you about. Um, you see, the thing is, Cora, it uh, never happened. Never happened? That story you heard, all rubbish, all made up by chaps with chips on their shoulders. <laughs> Chaps with chips. <laughs> chips with chaps. I mean chaps with chips. Never happened, did it, Bertie? No. Never happened. What was it that never happened? Well, you see, it was like this. In the drones club, they have this swimming pool, you see. And they had these ropes hanging down from the ceiling all the way across the swimming pool. Anyway, having got me in sporting mood with a few cocktails, and a bottle of the ripest, Toppy said to me... Or rather, didn't say. <laughs> That's it. Toppy didn't say. I say, Bertie, I bet you a tenner you can't swing all the way across the pool on those ropes. Mm. And since I didn't suggest it, naturally Bertie didn't try to do it. I knew I could, you see, because I'd seen old cat's meat Potter Purbright do it. <laughs> and if old cat's meat can do it, I can jolly well do it. Do you see what I mean? So I am... Um, or rather, would have taken it on if I had suggested it, but I didn't. I would have taken it on if Tuppy had suggested it, but as he didn't, I didn't. <laughs> Go on. Anyway, so there I was. I mean, there I wasn't. <laughs> In full evening fig, swinging across. The Drones Club swimming pool. And, and then you got to the middle. <laughs> and that's when I found out that this hound of hell had tied the last two ropes to the end so that I couldn't reach the now and I was left stranded in the middle. <laughs> it was laughing around like a bitch. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been so funny. <laughs> <laughs> this leaves me with no choice but to drop into the depths and swim ashore in correct evening costume. Would have left you with no choice. Exactly. Um, you see, Cora, it was all a dreadful mistake. It never happened. I see. Miss Bellinger, thank you so very much for coming. Mr Bingham, I do so admire the work that you uh, do you, here. You, you do see, Cora, don't you, because it was all a mistake. I have just left Lady Walkinson <laughs> talking with some of my parishioners. Perhaps you'd care to come and join us. Uh, I say dash it. I should like that very much. It will have to be a brief visit. I need to visit my milliner before tonight's performance. Uh, yes, I'll come along too. It'd be, be good to get to know some of the chaps of Beefy Nurse. That will not be necessary, Tuppy. I do not suppose you have the common touch. Mm -hmm. Mr Bingham needs someone who can be like one of them, almost. Uh, I jolly well have. My, my touch is as common as anyone's. If <laughs> horny <laughs> hands the son of toil, I could be. <laughs> if I had horny hands and if I was the son of toil. You can stay here and keep Mr Worcester company, and I will consider what you have said. I, I, I say, um, oh, by the way, Bertie, um, your Aunt Agatha asked me to tell you how delighted she is that you're going to sing for us this mm -hmm. evening. And she will be in the audience to give you moral support. Ah, oh, well, I'm glad you raised that particular point, Beefy, because there's a... There's been a change of plan. Uh, oh, oh, never mind, Bertie. All will be well. It jolly well better be. I've been through the most frightful ordeal on your account. Oh, excuse me, sir. I fancy I can see Mrs. Travers through the window, accompanied by Miss Travers, sir. Oh, Aunt Delia and Angela are coming here. It would appear so, sir. Angela, eh? My cousin Angela. Did you hear that, Tuppy? My Aunt Dahlia and her daughter Angela. Uh, Tuppy? <coughs> Tuppy? What have you done with Mr. Glossop, Jeeves? Mr. Glossop has left, sir. Uh, uh, uh. But why? He was just standing here. Well, why has he left? I can only surmise that he was not desirous of meeting Mrs. Travers and Mrs. Travers, sir. But why, Jeeves? I mean, Bertram Worcester may be plagued by as scaly a platoon of ants as ever walked to the earth. But my Aunt Dahlia is an exception. She is one of the best. And her daughter Angela is a very definite boulet. Why on earth should Tuppy not want to be with? I could not say, sir. Bertie! Where are you, Bertie? 
She appears to be calling you from outside the building, sir. Mrs. Travers has a carrying voice. She does. Has <laughs> <laughs> it ever occurred to you, Jeeves, that if all other sources of income failed, she could make a good living? <coughs> calling the cattle home across the sands of Jeeves. <laughs> I have not considered that point, sir, but no doubt you are right. <laughs> right here, Aunt Dahlia. But here we've been looking everywhere for you. I need your help. And you shall have it. I speak loosely. I don't need your help. But you just said... I need Jeeves' help. <laughs> Jeeves? I need your help. No, but you greatly assist me in providing it, madam, if I might be apprised of the matter in which you require assistance. Does he talk to you like this when you're alone? Oh, he wants to know what the problem is. Oh, I see. <laughs> she has had her heart broken. Good Lord. Angela, have you had your heart broken? I have had my heart broken. <laughs> Jeeves, Miss Travers has had her heart broken. Most disturbing, sir. Rally around, Jeeves. What can we do about it? It might be of assistance if we could be told the identity of the person who has broken Miss Travers' heart, sir. Sound plan, Jeeves. Mm -hmm. Who's the fiend who has done this, Angela? Now, I will not speak his name. Why not? not? Oh, uh, all right, then. It's Tuppy Glossop. <laughs> Jeeves! It's Tuppy Glossop. Indeed, sir. <laughs> well, no wonder he legged it when he heard you were outside. Let me tell you, young Angela, you are better off without Tuppy Glossop. Do you know what he did to me? <laughs> it was like this. <laughs> One night at the Drones Club. Can we wait for your life story until we can get it in book form? The question is, what are we going to do about Angela? Really likes him, does she? Likes him? Ever <coughs> since the beginning of the season, until three weeks ago, it's all over, Angela. Haunted the heist, lapped up daily lunches, danced with her half of the night. So naturally, we thought it was only a matter of time before he suggested they hot style a wedding bell or two. Poor Angela was quite off her ribs about him. I was quite off my oats about him. <laughs> but now he's dropped her like a hot brick, and I hear he's infatuated with some girl called what she called again? Oh, Cora Bellinger. But I will not hear that woman's name. Hmm. What woman? Oh, Cora Bellinger. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know her, Bertie? Uh, we have met. And what is this disgusting female like? Ah, see for yourself. <coughs> Rather oh. lacking in a sense of humour, <laughs> and built along the lines of the Eiffel oh, Tower. Oh, no. <laughs> I suspect it as much do you hear. Oh, my dear Tuppy, to be purloined by such a woman, the duplicity. Quite. When it comes to Tuppy Glossop, the word duplicity springs naturally to the lips. Do you know what he did to me at the drones club? I meant the Bellinger woman's duplicity, idiot! Uh, there, there, we'll have the worthless people scoundrel back, you'll see. Begging for the <laughs> Jolly good. Yes, never fear. Jeeves will find a way. Find a way, Jeeves. Consume a whole ocean of fish, if that is what it takes. But find a way of splitting up young Tuppy from the Eiffel Tower. I have already done so, sir. You have a way to free him from the coils of that terrible woman. I can suggest a course of action which I believe will deliver the desired results, madam. Oh, tell us, Jeeves, tell us. Well, uh, madam, in, in affairs of this description, the first essential is to study the psychology of the individual. The what? The what? Oh, uh, he means what the chap's like. Well, what are those chaps like? What which chaps like Jeeves? <laughs> uh, Miss Bellinger, sir. For, on my brief acquaintance with her, it struck me that hers is a somewhat intolerant nature. I could envisage Miss Bellinger applauding success. I could not see her sympathising with failure. You will recall, sir, when you tried to light her cigarette. My dashed lighter wouldn't work. 
She gave me the kind of look that would curdle milk at 50 paces. Oh, but that's brilliant, Jeeves. All we have to do is arrange for Tuffy to fail to light her cigarette fairly regularly, and the Bellinger creature will eventually throw him out. But he's not going to go on and on failing to light her belly cigarette, is he? As if he's employed by the circus as the fire eaters <laughs> assistant. <laughs> What's <laughs> <laughs> the flaw in the scheme? Surprised you didn't spot that, Jeeves. I only mentioned the matter of the unlit cigarette by way of an illustration, sir. <laughs> Mr. Glossop's failure could be in another arena entirely. Such as? Oh, well, madam, you may not yet be aware that in the hope of impressing Miss Bellinger, Mr. Glossop has offered to sing at tonight's entertainment. Oh, great God, is it that bad? <laughs> I fear so. <laughs> However, if he were to be badly received, if, let us say, the audience were to howl him off the stage, then I believe Miss Bellinger would cease to entertain affection for him. So he's got to get himself howled off the stage? Precisely, madam. <laughs> well, the wretched little Pimple is so ugly that is bound to happen. <laughs> he is not ugly. He is quite beautiful. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you rely on Tuffy getting the bird from the costumongery of Bermondsey? Uh, the key, sir, I think, will lie in his choice of song. I suspect he intends to sing Sunny Boy. <laughs> Not even Tuffy Glossop would do anything so despicable. Sonny Boy, Jeeves, and I may have mentioned this before... Uh, he knows the song, <laughs> sir. How do you know? Uh, you may recall, sir, some weeks ago, before the recent events at the Drones Club, of which you have spoken with much warmth, uh, <laughs> Mr. Glossop and you uh, shared a convivial evening, at the end of which he returned with you to the flat. I recall nothing of the sort. But I will take your word for it. <laughs> what transpired after our arrival? Now, Mr. Glossop uh, accompanied you in a spirited rendering of Sunny Boy, sir. I suspect it's the only song he knows. Uh, I don't think Mr. Glossop has, uh, is a man of wide cultural interests. Uh, no, all right, all right. So he sings Sunny Boy, but why do you suppose he'll get the bird for singing Sunny Boy? But such a conclusion is likely if the audience has... Uh, lost its taste for that particular melody, if, for example, it has already been sung. But who else is going to sing it? I will not get up and sing Sunny Boy in front of the East End's finest. That is all I have to say on the matter. That is an end to it. You cannot change my mind. I am adamant. My hero. <laughs> There's no way of showing 
What you mean to me, sonny boy? When there are gray skies, I don't mind the gray skies. You make them blue, sonny boy. Friends may forsake me, let them all forsake me. I still have you, sonny boy. So, sunny boy, you came from him. <laughs> I know your worth. You made a heaven for me right here on earth. And when the angels are lonely, take you cause they're lonely. I'll follow you, sunny boy. Enormously, uh, your rendering of that old uh, musical favourite, uh, Burlington Burton. 
Um, would you like to tell us uh, what you propose to sing as your uh, first encore? Here's the music. Be free now, strum along to your piano and see if you can't strum along with me. <laughs> oh, I say. <laughs> Tell me, old fruit. Play, Beefy, play! Come on, what are you waiting for? Oh. Mr. Bellinger is here, so oh, 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 oh,
so kind as to a one top to take your seat. I cost you. Gentlemen, uh, Miss Cora Benninger. Oh. Oh. She's here now. <laughs> you said I need to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Benninger. Um, what a special a privilege and honour it is to welcome you to Bermondsey. I am delighted to be here. I'm not sure parishioners, Mr. Bingham. I consider it one of the great privileges of wealth to be able to give pleasure to those less well-endowed than oneself. It is very uh, kind and condescending of you to see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are, I believe, uh, going to honour us uh, by singing for us tonight. Will you accompany me on the piano forte, Vicar? Most assuredly. Do you have the song for me? I have. <laughs> <laughs> Young Tucky, 
and I jolly well do, and with a great degree of warmth, I may say. And so much you if he'd done to you the thing he did to me in the truth. <laughs> or rather, did you? Dribbling, <laughs> Mr. Worcester. Absolutely. Mr. Glossop asked, sent me a message asking me please to sing Sunny Boy as it was one of his special favourites. Who delivered the message? The message was delivered, Mr. Worcester, by your man Jeeves. <laughs> But Jeeves? No, no. I mean, Dashes. Jeeves? Oh, Cora, darling, I just heard. Oh, my poor darling, Cora. Oh, what a thoroughly beastly thing to happen. Oh, and after you came all the way from the West End for their benefit. Oh, oh, oh. Let that be a lesson to you. That hurt. It was intended to. Look, you, you jolly well stay away. Uh, uh, don't you fear, darling. I'll protect you. I warn you, I will not stand idly by and see my tuppy mistreated. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why, Mr. Glossop, we will not meet again. Oh, uh, Miss Berenger. Uh, oh, dear. I'm afraid that the events of this evening may have jeopardised the contribution she was going to make to our church building fund. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Miss Bellinger! <laughs> Angela? Yes? Toppy? <laughs> How would you react to you becoming to the Barclay with me for a for a segment of supper and a spot of dancing. I think that would be spiffing. <laughs> Jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> song a third time was likely to be hostile. Especially with that gassed doll. You never could have guessed she'd be stupid enough to bring that on. No, on the contrary, sir. The doll was a suggestion I passed on to her. <laughs> <laughs> you told her that Tuppy told, wanted her to tote that silly doll around? No, sir. I said you did. <laughs> you did what? Chiefs, do you realise what you've done? Cora Bellinger will hate me forever. It may be for the best, sir. You'll recall that Lady Warpleston regards her as a suitable consort for you, sir, should her entanglement with Mr. Glossop prove of a temporary nature, which has in fact occurred, sir. <laughs> Jeeves, you're a genius. How much did Angela tip you? Most generous, sir. Five pounds. And I suppose my Aunt Dahlia chipped in a bob or two? Exceedingly generous, sir. Ten pounds. You've been coining it, Jeeves. I have added appreciably to my savings, sir. <laughs> well, I suppose I may as well chip in two. Here's, um, here's twenty quid. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Marty! What was that? Uh, that was Lady Warholtzman, sir. I fear she may have had an account of recent events from Miss Bellinger, sir. Uh, she may have been able to amplify Miss Bellinger's account. Uh, she was present while you sang Sunny Boy, sir. Bertie, I require a word with you. <laughs> Jeez, uh, no corner of London will be safe with both my Aunt Agatha and Cora Bellinger on the wall. <laughs> I fancy you're in need of a holiday at the seaside, sir. I am. I am. Get the car. It will mean missing the <coughs> Drones Club annual dinner, sir. The Drones Club annual dinner will have to struggle on somehow without Bertram Worcester. Then the car is at the front door, sir. No time to pack. Uh, I've already done so, sir. The car, the <laughs> cases are inside the car. I think that he and his unspeakable manservant are on the stage, Lady Warple's On the stage? I shall go there at once. <laughs> Marty, you miserable race crew. Lead me to the 
call Jeeves. <laughs>